Hey everyone, how are you all doing today? Today, we're going to do another video on the Legends book that takes place right before Episode 3, Labyrinth of Evil by James Luceno. Now, I came across a passage where Palpatine contacts Anakin personally via hologram, while the young Jedi is struggling with his anger. What I found intriguing about their conversation is that it reveals how, unknown to Anakin, Palpatine is already giving him Sith teachings, trying to push him to the dark side. It becomes clear as they continue their discussion and bring up Anakin's confession of what he did to the Tuscans that killed his mother. That this isn't the first time, either, that Palpatine has tried to pull Anakin further towards him and away from the Jedi. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the story, let me quickly catch you up. Anakin and Obi-Wan are on a mission to uncover the hidden whereabouts and identity of Darth Sidious. And the Dark Lord has reason to be concerned, as thanks to Newt Gunray's incompetence, the Jedi have gotten their hands on the Mechno chair that the Viceroy uses to communicate directly with Sidious. The Sith technology could help lead the Republic's protectors right on the path to their ancient enemy. While Obi-Wan is off talking strategy with Yoda, Anakin is watching over the Republic technicians who are handling the Mechno chair. Because of Anakin's young age, the experienced crew are somewhat dismissive of the future Sith Lord. Here's the excerpt, and then we can talk about it. He cut his eyes to the three human technicians who were fitting the Mechno chair into a crash foam safety harness. One of them was working too fast, and almost knocked the chair over. Anakin shot to his feet, and stormed across the bay. Be careful with that, he shouted. The oldest of the three gave him a scornful glance. Relax, kid. We know our job. Kid? He waved his hand, calling on the force to keep the mechno chair fixed in place. The three techs strained to move it, baffled until they realized what Anakin had done. Then the same one straightened and glared. All right, let go of it. When I'm convinced you actually know what you're doing. Look, kid. Anakin beetled his brows in anger and advanced a step. The three techs began to back away from the chair. They're afraid of me. They've heard about me. For an instant, their fear empowered him. Then he felt shame and averted his glance. The eldest was holding up his hands. Take it easy, Jedi. I didn't mean to offend you. Pack it yourself if you want to, another said. Anakin swallowed hard. It's important, that's all. I don't want anything to happen to it. He let the mechno chair settle to the floor. Carefully, this time the eldest said, refusing to so much as glance at Anakin. General Skywalker, a trooper called from behind him. Anakin turned, saw the trooper motioning to the shuttle. Hyperwave comma for you, from the office of the Supreme Chancellor. Now the three technicians looked at him again, as well. They should. Without a word, Anakin spun on his heel and ascended the shuttle's boarding ramp, above a hollow projector plate in the ship's comm center. A flickering image of Supreme Chancellor Palpatine was resolving. When Anakin had positioned himself on the transmission grate, Palpatine smiled. Congratulations, Anakin, on your victory at Caitanamoidia. Thank you, sir. But I'm sorry to report that Viceroy Gunray escaped, and that fighting continues in the Rock Ark cities. Palpatine's smile faltered. Yes, I was informed as such. It wasn't the first time Anakin had heard from Palpatine in the field. At Jabim, Palpatine had ordered Anakin to retreat before the planet fell to the Separatists. At Presitlin, he had praised Anakin for having saved the day. Still, the communications were often as awkward as they were flattering. What's wrong, my boy? Palpatine asked. I sense that you're troubled about something. If it involves Gunray, accept my word that he won't be able to hide from us forever. None of them will. One day you'll have your chance for complete victory. Anakin wet his lips. It's not about Gunray, sir. Just a small incident here made me angry. What incident? Anakin was tempted to disclose the details of his and Obi-Wan's discovery but Yoda had told him to remain silent about the Mechno chair. Nothing important, he said, but I always feel guilty when I become angry. That's a mistake, Palpatine said gently. Anger is natural, Anakin. I thought we'd been through all this regarding what took place on Tatooine. Obi-Wan doesn't show anger, except, of course, at me. Even then, it's more like aggravation. Anakin, you're a passionate young man. That's what separates you from the Jedi comrades. Unlike Obi-Wan and the others, you weren't raised in the temple, where younglings are taught to conquer their anger by transcending it. You enjoyed a natural childhood. You can dream. You have imagination and vision. You're not some unthinking machine, some heartless piece of technology. Not that I'm suggesting that the Jedi are, Palpatine was quick to add, but for someone like you, any threat to someone or something important to you is likely to evoke an emotional response. It happened with your mother. It will happen again. But you shouldn't fight those responses. Learn from them, but don't fight them. Anakin suppressed an impulse to reveal his marriage to Padme, 
as well. Do you think I'm immune to anger? Palpatine said into the short silence. I've never seen you angry. Well, perhaps I've grown adept at reserving my anger for private moments, but it grows more difficult to do so in the face of the frustrations I face with the Senate. With the way this war persists, oh, I know that you and the other Jedi are doing everything you can, but the Jedi Council and I don't always see eye to eye on how this war should be waged. You know my love for the Republic knows no bounds. That's why I'm struggling so hard to keep it from falling to pieces. Anakin forced a breath. The Senate should simply follow your lead. Instead, they block you. They tie your hands. It's as if they envy the power they gave you. Yes, my boy, many do, but many support me as well. More important, we must abide by the rules and regulations of the Constitution, or else we are no better than those who stand in the way of freedom. Some individuals should be above the rules, Anakin grumbled. A case can be made for it. And indeed, you are one of those people, Anakin, but you must know when to act and when not to. Anakin nodded. I understand. Palpatine is endorsing the virtues of anger and feeding Anakin's inflated ego here to make him feel separate from the Jedi Order. He's allowing him to trust his emotions and go wild with them, to embrace them. Now, I left in the part with the Republic technicians as I felt it demonstrated the struggle Anakin has with all his power. He wants to be altruistic, to be the perfect Jedi, but also to be admired and respected, and sometimes feared. The crew showed him disrespect, at least in his mind, and he immediately wanted to display his power, his superiority, which causes him to feel shame. Palpatine seized upon that jumble of contradicting emotions to continue gradually turning Anakin, telling him that, no, 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 you shouldn't hide your emotions, you shouldn't stop from feeling the way you do. You're not a mindless machine like the Jedi. You were raised to be a young boy on Tatooine with hopes and dreams, and you should use those. It's something the Jedi don't have. Now, this is all something he's done throughout the war. This is why I like to read the books, canon or not. They can really dig deep into the characters. Now, one of the critiques of the movie, from Revenge of the Sith, is that Anakin's fall seemed to come out of nowhere. He's good one minute, then snap, instant child killer. But if you read this book, and then right after, as I've mentioned before, the book version of Episode 3, his turn to the dark side isn't immediate at all, and makes a lot more sense. You can also understand this more from the video I made a few years ago, which has now over 2 million views, explaining why Hayden Christensen did such an amazing job acting as Anakin Skywalker. It's a really good video, and if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. It might just change your view, or at least broaden it, as Palpatine would say. Anyways guys, thanks for watching this video. I really only get to do this channel because of you, and it's you guys that keeps me going. So, I really appreciate it, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Now, fulfill your destiny.